Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making a multi-purpose air cannon that you can actually fill with a bicycle pump. I actually have a lot of other uses for this compressed air canister that I'll share with you in the future, but for today, this is what we're making. The first key item you need to make this is responsible supervision. The rest pretty much relies on plumbing parts. For a full description of the parts included, see the description below. It's time to put on the safety gear and take a look at what we're gonna make. When you've completed this project, you're gonna have a sealed pressure chamber that has basically an entry valve on one end that's like a tire valve, and on the other end, it's gonna be connected to a ball valve that you'll use to release the air pressure that you build up. To make the pressure chamber, we're gonna start with a 12 inch or about a 31 centimeter length of ABS pipe that has a two inch diameter. As always, I highly recommend you do your own research regarding laws, regulations, and safety before engaging in this or any other similar project. Once you've cut your piece of ABS, you wanna make sure to round off any of the edges that are a little bit rough, so that way it's nice and smooth and you get a good grip when you put your connecting pieces on. This coupling is smooth on the inside of both ends and the adapter itself is smooth on one end but threaded on the other. Before you add the PVC cement, you wanna make sure to wipe away any loose debris or dust. You wanna make sure you really get the best possible seal you can on both ends of this. You're gonna be putting a lot of pressure in here and it's important to have it very, very solid. There are different types of PVC cement, so make sure to follow the directions that are on the can that you have. For my PVC cement, I put a generous coating on both pieces that are gonna be fit together and then I slide them in, and as I slide them together, you do a little bit of a twisting motion, then hold pressure for about 30 seconds. Then you're gonna to wanna to let this sit as long as it recommends on the can to get a good, firm seal. We're gonna repeat the cement process for the PVC bushing, which is essentially an end cap with a hole in the end, and that hole is threaded, and that is where we're gonna end up putting the ball valve, that that will be our outflow for our air once we're done. You have some different options when it comes to tire valves for this particular purpose, but what I've done is gone to an auto parts store and picked up some tubeless tire valves. There's different kinds you can use, and you'll see the one we're gonna have in here in a minute is threaded in place, and that's much easier to use. You wanna pick a drill bit that's just a bit smaller than the base of the threaded area on the valve itself. We're gonna then use that drill bit to make a hole in the very center of the end cap. After you've drilled your hole, test the fit. If it's still not quite big enough, go back and spread it out just a little bit, but you do want it to be snug when you're putting it in, and then you're just gonna crank it down and tighten it in place. Once the valve is well seated, you're gonna turn it back around and actually take that little metal washer and the locking nut and put them in place and tighten them down. You will now have a very secure valve that you can use to fill up the chamber when you're done. If your pump can't quite reach the valve, you've got a couple of options for fixing that. You can either cut away a little bit at the wall of the plug itself until your hose can reach, or you can do like I did and just add a valve extension. They sell these for trucks at auto supply stores too. We're now gonna set up our release valve assembly, which is made completely of half inch PVC and half inch PVC parts. You'll notice that there's sections I'm using threaded pieces for, and I like that a lot better than cementing everything into place because it allows me to go back and readjust if need be or rescale my projects. But because we still need an extremely good seal, we're using pipe tape that was meant to be used for gas. This will really help to ensure that you've got a good seal before you start to build up pressure. We are, however, gonna take a short piece of PVC and cement it in between two of these male connectors. Both of the male connectors are threaded and that's what's gonna allow us to connect the actual ball valve to the chamber. Now we're gonna use the pipe tape one more time. The yellow tape is the tape that was meant for gas. Plumber's tape is typically white and that's meant for pipes that use water only. You're gonna wrap the pipe tape around a few times and then tighten everything down. You want it crank it down with a really good hand tighten. And then we're gonna go back and pressure test everything before we start to build it up to a higher pressure. You do this by putting a little bit of air in first and then submerging the entire thing underwater and looking for tiny bubbles. If there's bubbles, go back and tighten things up a bit more. Now I've got a couple of fun ways to show you how your new compressed air canister can work. First, we're gonna get some plastic bottles that'll slide easily onto the PVC at the end. The Coke bottle that you saw there did not slide on easily, so we will not be using that. Next, we make sure the ball valve is closed, get a good connection with the bike pump on the end of our chamber, and start pumping this thing up. 
The great thing about this design is there are a lot of different types of pumps that you can use with it. I happen to like a bicycle pump that has a pressure gauge on it. This way I know I can gear towards 70 PSI and give it a good test. In addition, having the pressure gauge is very important just from a safety perspective. That way you make sure that you don't overload any of the particular items you're using in terms of materials or the pump itself. You should always be thinking about safety at every step and ask yourself at all times what could possibly go wrong so that you can anticipate and prevent big problems. There are several different fun and interesting ways I've dialed in these compressed air chambers to make new and interesting projects. I look forward to sharing these with you in future videos. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.